Yeah, I think whether you get on an ambo or get on fire, or get on PD for a few years, like, you know, if, if you want to make a career out of it, like, it's, you absolutely can. You know, as far as, like, off time goes, my wife, at the time she's my girlfriend, she's like, oh, he's actually, like, starting this meme page. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. And they're like, what? And we're like, yeah, no, it's, like, totally gonna... It's gonna be a it's thing. It's gonna be a thing, and they're just like, oh, man. When did you think, like, how many followers do you remember? Do you, like, remember, like, when is this gonna be... You're looking at the numbers, you're like, yeah, this is going to be something. We knew it was going to be something in the first two weeks. No kid. Was it, was it growing pretty fast off the rip? Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty consistent. Um, about like a thousand followers a week. Like, that's pretty crazy. Pretty steady. I kind of want to just like go run out in the desert and do the friendly thing. Ride Shy Halud. No, like imagine like a, like a week long, like dune larp. Yeah. I could, I could t- <laughs> Welcome back to the Armo Podcast, the Administrative Results Podcast that is at war with managerial outcomes, yet it falls underneath the jurisdiction of managerial outcomes. The trench warfare has been rather intense between the two entities, and losses are mounting on both fronts. Frostbite has set in, and both sides are very demoralized. Today I have with, <laughs> today I have with me Matt of Worst Responders. <laughs> Matt, have, it's, it's great to have you, dude. It's good to be here. Last time I, uh, the last time I was doing something with you, we were out wearing ski masks in the desert. That was the first video I did with you. Yeah, that was. Yeah. And you and you gave this us is... a crash course on first aid. I yeah. To, I want to talk to you about how important tampons are for gunshot wounds. I think they're the the superior method. We could actually demonstrate how effective they are right here, right now. Oh, you got some tampons on you? I have a gun on me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> do, you have, do you have tampons on you? Uh, I carry, I carry a few. Okay. I carry a Perfect. Few. Yeah. I would never do that. I appreciate that. Yeah. yeah, it's so crazy that that thing's going around, like the packing wounds with tampons thing. I don't know where that came from. Somebody a long time ago came up with it based on absolutely nothing. Yeah. Um, it still confuses me and angers me extensively. Mm-hmm. I think the entire the entire community is baffled by it, but um, like it's better point. than nothing. Like, no, it, it's literally nothing. It's, yeah, it's literally this. There's not like... The, the blowing on material it. is just nothing to soak up or well, yeah. at least pack that wound. Right. That's they're like, oh, you have two points. It's like, okay, hey. And Benji did like a great video on this um, where he shows what, like, a, I think a tampon's designed to absorb like five to 10 milliliters of blood mm-hmm. over four hours or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's like a, you can hold that much in your hand. Yeah. And then um, like actual bleedings. A thousand milliliters, two thousand <laughs> milliliters, you know, one or two liters. Yeah. Um, and it was a uh, even if you bought we I mean, like financially we did it we did the math too. It was like yeah. you would have to buy thousands of dollars. I think it was like seven or eight hundred dollars of tampons to get the same amount of uh, gauze as like a one roll of gauze. Oh my gosh! And so like there but there's no way in any f- financially like there's just it. There's no way it Did works. Did someone just look at a gunshot wound and be like, oh, a tampon could fit in this? Uh, yeah. And they're I think like, that's, oh, this is clearly has got to work. Yeah. I mean, I'm kind of also at the point now where it's like, if somebody wants to do that, you know, maybe just- Kind of let them. Just go for it. Well, the problem is, is like, like, if they're doing the, it to me, like if I got shot and they're trying to pack yeah, in my Yeah, that, and it's kind of it's like, that's kind of the, like if I'm all about taking like the don't put the plastic bag on your head yeah. warnings off. Yeah. But the issue is, like, people are out there teaching others that this is, like, a solution, you know? I guess, yeah, if you, if you, well, it's tough, because if you have no idea, if you believe yeah, some it's, I guy I, that looks high speed, like, hey, you can pack a wound with a tampon, yeah. it's like, oh, I guess I can. Yeah. They, they don't know any better. I guess, I guess if, if I had, like, three wishes, my one, one, one of my wishes would be that anybody who teaches people that tampons work for bleeding are no longer allowed to teach, <laughs> and they... They can only do that to themselves, you know? Yeah. I don't know. The, you know, that's a fair. That's yeah. a fair. Uh, yeah. My second wish would be that, like, ice cream moans every time you lick it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, buddy, this is a family channel, dude. This is a family channel. All right, you can, you Lock can, it you in. Del- you can Lock it in, dude. My mom watches these. Oh. Nah, she doesn't really watch this. Nah, do, your parents, like... do your parents, like, under, like do they conceptualize... 
what you do for work or they just yeah yeah my dad he was always super into it like he was always like so i'd get sh- like merch orders from across like the like europe and stuff and be like mm-hmm. oh i got a, a cool merch order from like the queen's royal dragoons barracks like it was it was pretty fun so they at first i think all my family was like hey you're quitting your, <laughs> like your you're going off the rails <laughs> and you're gonna be a youtuber it's like they don't like there's no real to them, at least to my parents and to some of my family, they have no, like, no grasp of like the business and how you can make money off YouTube. So that was always a big leap. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think they they have definitely seen like, oh, okay, like he he'll be okay. Like, yeah, we're not too worried about it. Yeah. When you started Worst Responders, <laughs> did you uh, did you have the same kind of thing? Um, yeah. Well, I I had I uh, I started this uh, this app that would let you. Um, like order and pay for drinks and food, like skip the line at bars. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was, this was like way, this, I think we were doing this like 2017. Mm-hmm. So it was, it was a little like too premature for like mobile payments and stuff. And so I was working on that for like two years. And, uh, you know, it was a promising software. It's like people mm-hmm. people get it, right? It's like, yeah. oh, it's a software startup. And it failed like miserably. I, my idea of software startup guys are like dudes that are really good at teching but addicted to cocaine. <laughs> Is that is that founded? I thought this in was any, a family podcast. I lied. Buddy. Is that founded in any, fa- any Pro- truth? Um, I think later stage startups where they have lots of money because mm. cocaine's expensive. Yeah, it's true. Um, yeah, in the early days, it's, dude, it sucks. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's fun. It's I I don't know. I think the startups are super super cool. Um, but yeah, so like that didn't really pan out, and then. Uh, you know, I was just kind of doing odd jobs and working with a couple of these guys on different projects. And, um, you know, I'm like 30, I think 31, 30, 31 at this point. And um, so Brandon and I started, you know, we're like, hey, let's start this meme page because, mm-hmm. you know, we're working on the Ambos. And uh, like at the, my wife, at the time she's my girlfriend, you know, her family's like, oh, like, how's the app going? And <laughs> She's like, oh, he's actually like starting this meme page. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. And they're like, what? And we're like, yeah, no, it's like totally gonna. It's gonna be a it's thing. It's gonna be a thing. And they're just like, oh man. When did you think? Like, how many followers? Do you remember? Do you like remember? Like, when is this gonna be? Like, you're looking at the numbers. You're like, yeah, this is gonna be something. We knew it was gonna be something in the first two weeks. No kidding. Like, I mean, yeah. So Brandon had like a well, has like a really strong social media background. Mm-hmm. I I did to some extent, like on the marketing side, I knew a little bit about business and like the objectives that you should try to be aiming for. And Brandon also had previous business experience. And it was like the second week we were doing it. And he made, he made this meme where it was like, when your meme page is making millions of dollars and you still have to stay on the job just to have like relevant content for your stupid jokes or post it's like something like that yeah and we like we didn't post it we kept that between ourselves but yeah like him and i and you know we're not like you know we're not jeff bezos over here yeah. or anything but um like we knew early on we're like we've we've consumed enough social media where we mm-hmm. saw other people what they've done and um was it was it growing pretty fast off the rip yeah yeah it was pretty consistent mm-hmm. um about like a thousand followers a week like that's pretty crazy pretty steady just out of nowhere going from like a zero to well 100. i mean we spent i mean you know the algorithms changed a lot yeah. back then we um like you, you could make your profile private mm-hmm. and if you sent like somebody sent one of your memes to somebody like they couldn't see it unless they followed you yeah and so like we took advantage of that a few times um but basically like we'd make a th- we'd make some memes and then we just until Instagram was like, all right, you've done this too much. You can't do it anymore. Mm-hmm. We would just like go follow and like and just like do the social part of social media yeah. as as Brandon always put it. And Casting a wide net. Yeah. So yeah. like just you'd go to other other EMS pages and like people's comments. And mm-hmm. um, one of the things we found to work really well was being like the first comment on or like an early comment on a mm-hmm. on like a larger page. And so it's just, you know, as as much as I wish, and most people think it's like you just make a meme and you post it. It was like literally every single it, minute we were doing something mm-hmm. for the first six, seven, eight, nine months. It's some nitty gritty footwork. Yeah, just for an Instagram meme page. Yeah, I respect the hustle. Thank you. Because I I feel like I my used parents to, don't yeah. get it though. 
No, they're, they're like, what <laughs> do like, you... so do you get money like each time you post on Instagram? And I'm like, no, no. I, no I, I've explained it. I showed them, you know, my brand awareness. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, but it's it's fun. It's been fun. So uh, the, yeah, we didn't we didn't start slinging anything till, well, the first two like sticker things we did, they were giveaways. Mm. We were like, hey, if, like if you like if you're cool, like send us your send us your name and address and we'll send you these stickers yeah and so we you know it's like old skateboard companies like the only way you get a sticker is like you got to get they don't just sell the stickers mm. you know and so um you know we did that a few times and we're like all right let's let's actually sell them we sold them on etsy and it took us like a whole weekend of sitting at our kitchen tables like hand handwriting out names and addresses oh and my licking envelopes and stamps <laughs> we're like okay th this is th we gotta so we gotta fix this real quick <laughs> Ooh, we gotta improve this system <laughs> yeah but it was um yeah it was fun that's that's, that's a fun time because like, i remember doing like a lot of that stuff too with like merch and like i would hand write notes back when i did my merch and i was first starting out yeah we just was... like we make fun of people's names and stuff yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> I would always write like a, like a personalized thank you note because it did it mean a lot because oh, yeah. I couldn't monetize yet and I didn't have any sponsorships yet so I was like well I guess I'll sell shirts and so people would buy the shirts hey if you ever bought a shirt thank you <laughs> thank you very much but uh, I had to go through and do all that and I remember like because I was still working as a cop so I'd get off from my shift on the weekends write like notes pack orders and then go to the post office and ship them off so. Cause I, I had like a local shirt guy too, so I'd go to his house, pick up all my shirts, check them, make sure they're all good. So it was a, it was a real grind. And then I remember thinking like, okay, yeah, I got to automate this. This is getting kind of crazy. Yeah, like there's no way I can keep it going if you want to scale up. Just well, it's almost it's just like like people that have successfully scaled apparel companies. Like mm -hmm. there's not a ton of them out there. No. You know, like well, my they're goal, all they're all like the, the amount of infrastructure and work and systems and yeah. you know it's just completely insane when you really look at the, like how like how do you scale apparel it's yeah. like you have to, there's everybody and, wants to put their thing on a shirt yeah and and it's like staying relevant with your designs mm -hmm. cuz it's like it, it literally could be so hit or miss oh yeah <sighs> My goal was never even they like scale apparel. It's kind of like the the shirts were supposed to help out a bunch, and then other stuff came in. And I still do the shirts, and I, they still help out a bunch. But I just don't like. I just don't think like because I remember the doing the merch when I was small on the weekends. It took up so much time. I was taken mm -hmm. away from making videos. Right. So it was that's, like that's had, your thing. Yeah, I, that's my thing. So that's what if if it's taken away from that, I got to figure out a way to automate it. So yeah. Yeah, our we. The only reason we sold started selling shirts is because people asked for them. You know, people like, "Oh, I want this sticker on a shirt." And we're like, oh, "Okay," and we, you know, kind of went that route. And then, um, you know, our our bread and butter has always been the job board. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, like I've always I always liked your website where you're like, "Hey, like, don't buy this crap if you don't yeah. need it. Like, get stuff, like, yeah. get training, get like like improve your position in in oh. life before yeah. you." Yeah give me your money for whatever but you know i appreciate it yeah and so I'll, you know if you want to buy a keychain or stickers or shirts like i would i would implore you to you know if you're if you if you love your job and you're set and you know whatever you're taking care of great but mm -hmm. um i've always we, we've always kind of been more on the job board thing of just like are you tired of getting minimum wage mm -hmm. on an ambulance or you know do you want a little bit of adventure or you just want to see what else is out there so mm -hmm. It's never been like a buy my shirts, you know. Buy my shirts, yeah. Please buy my merch, yeah. Please. Job board's pretty cool. It's a it's a unique little thing. It's just like all right, you you kind of pay into it, and then you can really for how much you pay into it, elevate your life experience by getting a better job. So I mean, that's that feels mm -hmm. like a pretty good deal. Yeah, yeah. And so I mean, it's um, like COVID was bonkers. Yeah. There's there's still insane. Like there's like an EMT paying like fifty bucks an hour. For EMTs in South Dakota, for some like remote clinic, and it's like everything's paid for. Fifty bucks an 50 hour. Fifty bucks an hour, dude. And everything's paid for. Yeah. Just to be an EMT. Mm -hmm. Dang. <laughs> yeah, like you can you can get on a, you can get on a, like whips contracts with uh with your advanced EMT. There's a, like, yeah, there's there's a lot of, a lot of interesting opportunities out there that 
just require you to check a couple boxes, like especially like wildland fire mm-hmm. um, medical like contract standby stuff. It's like five, six, seven, eight hundred bucks a day. It's like there was like during COVID, there were, there were like EMTs that were making stateside about what some armed guys were making, like at an embassy. Oh overseas God, like dude. you know i'm gonna go be an emt screw youtube <laughs> no, no well like yeah i mean if you got if you got your emt and your your advanced emt plus your your time carrying a gun like you you'd qualify for some stuff mm. so, fun if you yeah. do that with tanks which i'm hearing rumors there's an there's a upcoming policy change but we'll see on on what i don't know on the contract i'm stuff? just i'm just hearing uh hearing rumbles so I, I don't know if I can even talk about it or if I get flamed or not, but worst case, we don't put this in. <laughs> yeah, maybe we, maybe we cut <laughs> maybe it. we don't. But yeah. Um, that's really fun, dude. I, so you were with, are you allowed to talk about which department you were with? For I don't want to give him any credit. That's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> but you were on I a, went, So I went through the Phoenix Academy. Okay. Um, and Phoenix, it's like this weird, everybody's kind of on the same playbook. Mm-hmm. Um. And so, like, multiple departments will send their guys to regional academies. So, like, there's, like, Mesa has one, Glendale has one, Phoenix has one. There's a couple others I'm probably forgetting. Um, and so, yeah, I got hired by a smaller department, like a suburb department, went through the Phoenix Academy, which was really cool. Um, got to make, you know, met a lot of really awesome people there. Yeah, so I did that for just under four years. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of got over it. There's some... Um, not all departments are created equal. No. Not all chiefs are your buddies. No. Um, there's, there's plenty of chiefs that are still cops and firefighters and there's plenty of chiefs yeah. that are not. So yeah. I was just kind of like, my dream job is causing me a lot of frustration. So I was like, I'm gonna. Yeah. The I'm dream, gonna... the dream job wears off pretty quick. Yeah. Yeah. It wears off. Like the fun and the excitement wears off very quick. Yeah. It's crazy how fast humans can adapt to stuff. Yeah. Yeah, just the, the zombie shuffle at midnight, two, four, six. I mean, you guys, you, I mean, you guys you don't get to sleep in bed. Yeah, you yeah. guys are stuck in a car. To be, yeah, <laughs> like, to be fair, it's like sucks. when you're working graves, at least I'm not like going for 24 hours. But I, I think my favorite thing is like for a medical call, standing there and then watching the fire guys at like 3 a.m. shuffle out there and hook up their leads. And they're like, all right, what's the matter? I'm like, <laughs> like, dude, this sucks for you guys. <laughs> you guys look rough. Yeah, I'm going to go to bed in a few hours, but you guys have a good one. Yeah. Yeah, so it was, it was always fun. It was, uh, it's like, I, like I love the, uh, I love the clowns, but I don't miss the circus. No, yeah. No. I love that saying. Yeah. Yeah, the, the boys, dude. I mean, and then once you leave, life goes on. It's like all, like, your, all your guys. We're still, like, like we're, we still hang out. Like, they come over and, yeah, like. I don't see my guys as much. I know they're busy doing their thing, but I do miss them. Yeah. So. And I'm also busy doing my thing. Yeah. I'm 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 hard to hang out with at times. So it's understandable. It is. Were you prior you're prior military, correct? Yes. So how was the fire academy going through it as a prior military guy? So <laughs> that's actually a, a fun one because there's a there was like five or six, at least, prior military guys in my academy. Mm-hmm. And so the first, um, like, the first day we get there, we're like, all right, you know, like the, the shark attack's coming. And we're like, oh, okay, maybe it's the second day. You know, it's the second yeah. day. We're like, all right, you know, everybody go put your PTs on. And we're like, oh, here it is. Here, yeah. here it's coming. And they're like, all right, you know, go outside, bring a water source. And we're like, oh, boy. We go outside and they're like, this is Christina. She's a department physical therapist. She's going to show us how we properly <laughs> warm up. And we're like... What? <laughs> yeah. And um, it was very, like, gentlemanly. Mm-hmm. Um, the shark attack never came. Um, no, you never got a shark attack, dude. No, because they're like, look, we're, like, we're here to teach you how to do this job, not, like, yeah, you know, like, if you need to be shamed, like, if you screw up, like, we, we have ways of dealing with it. And we're like, oh, man. And like, what is it? They're like, oh, like, public embarrassment. You're like, oh, that's even worse. Like, <laughs> 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 so it's like, yeah, like, I remember – uh I was like, I, I, my glove sucked. Mm-hmm. I was, I sucked, right? I sucked on this rep. I'm like, I don't know what happened to my gloves, but there was something that like, I just couldn't, I'm like pulling the, the rope to get the, and I'm just sliding. Like, it's like, yeah. I don't know if there's oil or what, 
right? And um, and I got new gloves the next day, and it never happened again. But it was like after after that day, the head RTO calls like seven of us out, and he's like, "Where's the fucking other the guy with the tattoo? You practice you military, you can't even you can't even raise a ladder, you know? No big and strong all your tattoos." And uh, <laughs> I was just like, "Oh, this is way worse than getting smoked." <laughs> so, oh. But the, yeah, the, it was cool. Um, one of the guys was like, "Hey, uh, like, do we all have to wear our sweaters or you know?" Yeah, because like the military, it's you know, one guy forgets his gloves. Like, no one's wearing gloves today. Yeah, you know, it's, yeah, it's, the uniformity. Yeah, and they're like, "We just want you guys to be comfortable and get a good workout." And I'm like, "What is this what place? Is this? They wear uniforms, but I can do whatever I want." Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Like the fire service is, is uh. Like the it's, it's it has the uniformity that you wish the military had because yeah. it's like as long as your hat says whatever fire department like we don't care if it's camouflage you know yeah um, guys have mullets and hilarious mustaches and God, such long vibe, glorious dude. hair and yeah like there you there is a little bit of, there is some room for individualism that's kind of nice yeah I remember in my police academy I uh, was at the range so for firearms training. So like it's two weeks out the range and I was stoked. So I was I've always been a gun guy to yeah. some capacity. So it was finally a chance to do some shooting. And I remember like we were shooting and it's like hot out. I think it's around getting into Arizona summer, so probably around like May or June. And I rolled my sleeves up because <laughs> I was like, I don't want to get a tan line while shooting out here. Because it, it, like you're always wearing the goofiest looking stuff as yeah. like a recruit. Like I think I had like five eleven tan pants and like a white t shirt or something like that. Well, and you guys do like the black. Like black, so that's and a white. That's a penguin suit. Okay, that's towards the beginning of your academy. Okay, like we call that. It's either the penguin suit or the Mormon fit. <laughs> so you're black and white. So you have your black trousers, your white pants, and a, and a black tie, and then you're supposed to have like a like a few things like your name tag, your pin, and the good book. Yeah, yeah. You kind of look like a Mormon missionary. But no, at the range, I rolled my sleeves up, and then the entire class had to do ten push-ups. Like it wasn't too bad, but they had to do ten push-ups because of me. Cause like they like they came over and they're like, all right, he wants to be an individual, so start pushing. And I was like, ah, oh, crap. What could you have pitched? Like, why don't we all roll up our sleeves? Nah, dude. It, yeah, I know. I, you got you got no <laughs> leverage. What are you talking about? Yeah. Hey, uh, uh, Sarge, can we uh, all roll up our sleeves because I feel like it? No, you guys just make the consensus decision amongst yourselves. Yeah. I'm sure that would have totally flown. I'm sure it totally would have been great. Yeah. Yeah. But I, so after that, I went down to everyone. I was like, all right, sorry, 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 as fast as I could before the next cycle of stuff started. So, how did the, um, yeah, what was your, like, what were your, t in kind of your, your view on the academy? And did you see like any fire academies going on while you guys were doing your academy? So I went to the Maricopa County uh, MCSO Sheriff's Office okay. Academy. So yeah, I don't think I saw any they're fires. On their own. Yeah. Yeah. If I recall correctly where it's at. Of, I don't know if there's any nearby firefighters, which I don't think there is. Yeah, that, that building's like its own no, training center because that's like attached to the jail and everything. Yeah, yeah, and they got like the track out front. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, because there was a police academy going on, um, where when ours was going on, and it was it was kind of fun to like look over and just be like, oof, Yeesh. that sucks. Yeah, it's, we're like over here, like I got a picture of me like with a some dispatcher that knew somebody that like ran that worked at the academy one of the rtos mm. she came down with her dog and she had like a little like baby carrier for the dog and like we were out doing ladder stuff and i got a picture of me with like this cute little puppy on my chest yeah you know i mean while like the cops are getting hazed to death <laughs> behind <laughs> us you know you're just like that sucks yeah dude hey you chose the wrong profession yeah oh you want to carry a gun <laughs> you want to enforce you can carry, the law you can carry a gun as a firefighter it just depends on how much risk you're willing to take. Oh, that's <laughs> it's like any know. rule. Yeah, if you're willing to break it. <laughs> yeah, like you could roll up your sleeves every day. Yeah, at the academy. Just there's consequences. How much trouble do you want to get in? <laughs> right. Yeah, dude. I think I had fun at the academy. I had a really fun time. I thought I wish it would have been like a little, like way tougher on the front half, and then ease off on the second half. Because it's like, all right, once like if they would have made everyone they wanted to quit in the front half, and then it's like, all right, now we're gonna chill out for a bit. Or they just keep the stress going throughout the entire time. The worst part about so they like, they they kind of didn't like they maintain the the whole no, time. No, they, e they ease up. Okay, they ease up after a bit. There's like phases to it. They know what they're doing. They, oh, okay. they have to weed the crowd out. Like the first week's chaotic and high, super high stress. You know, super everything's like, wrong. Yeah, everything's wrong. On, on a, like yeah. 
Yeah, it sounds very. I would assume that the any vets said that it was pretty similar to basic. You know, I don't think it's it, probably I mean, not as tough. I don't think it's, it's just different. different. Like, it's just know, different. Yeah, because like I wouldn't want to compare it to base because basics. Ba- is basics like you're, not you're that, signing your like. It's, it's not that hard. Okay. Like I, I was underwhelmed at basic. Oh training. really? Yeah. I remember like the first day at cab. I was like excited. Like I, I was there like super early, so make sure I wasn't late. And then they started off with PT, like in your in your penguin suit. So you're like you're wearing like a, like a more missionary suit. It's like probably it was actually I think we started out when it was like February, so it was at least nice out. But yeah, they PT you off the rip, and they're like, "All right, go inside." In like dress shoes. Yeah, yeah, in dress <laughs> shoes. So you're getting smoked. Just click clack click clack. Yeah, oh, that's sounds awful. Yeah, it was fun. It was a fun time. Like and then they they punish you weird too. So I think I had. An expired insurance card on me because they make you carry around your driver's license, your insurance, your registration. Yeah, I heard like the first day that they they inspect everything. Yeah, and so for whatever reason, my insurance I I must have grabbed the wrong card because I knew I had up to date insurance. And they're like, "Hey, why is your insurance wrong?" And I was like, "Oh no, I'm gonna get fired because you're so like you're so worried about getting fired for anything or like getting kicked out." But then I just had to do 100 burpees, and I was like, "I got the next, I got the right card the next day." So yeah, if you got dropped from our academy, just We'd be all in like the auditorium classroom thing, and an RTO would just come in and be like, "Hey, come with me." Yeah, and we, you'd be like, "Oh, because that happens, you know, like that happens all the time." And then they just didn't come back. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you're just like, <laughs> "Oh, uh, can, I think we can all figure out what just happened." Ooh, he got let go. Yeah, what was like a thing like a DQ for Fire Academy? Just not, not being a good fit. Oh, really? Yeah, like there was some. So like every rep was tracked. Like, um. So ours, they would, you know, hey, like, this is the evolutions and the things that we're doing. Um, go out and, you know, so we do our morning PT. <laughs> We'd cook breakfast. It was pretty cool. We had a big old kitchen. Yeah. Um, I'm sure they, you guys got to do that. Nah, dude, I lived, <laughs> off, I lived <laughs> off Whataburger in Roberto's. <laughs> yeah. For two we, years yeah, of we, my life. Yeah, we could, because um, it was like a bond. Like, they wanted us to, like, hey, like, you guys might mm. be living together, you know. Um. And so we would do the PT thing, uh, make breakfast, change, and then what minimal classrooms the time we would have. Mm-hmm. And then the rest of the time we were like in all of our stuff outside on the grinder just like doing it. So you would run out and sign up at which stations you wanted to go at. Mm. And – Well, what's the station? Like taking a, taking a plug or taking a hydrant or doing like a hose pole or doing – Wait, what's a plug? A fire hydrant. Okay. So – we have to explain it to the audience. Yes, yeah, so everyone like, may not be fire savvy. Well, so um, plugs like a very old timey term. Back in the day, um, the hydrants were mm-hmm. not nice yellow metal things sticking out of the ground. They were like pipes or tubes or something under the street, and yeah. it would be marked. And so, like the plug man had to be like the biggest, meanest, scariest dude because it was like other insurance companies, mm-hmm. and they would fight over like who gets. You know, who gets to the scene first and they get to because they're the ones that get paid or something like that. Hmm. Um, Hall of Flame, largest firefighting museum in the country. No kidding. Yeah, it's right over there. But so they would um they would like use a pickaxe or an axe and chop down to the where the water was and so, then they would Yeah, so every time there's it. a fire, you have to dig a hole. Yeah. This was like this is like back in the like bucket brigade days. No you kidding. Know? So um but yeah, so the like taking a plug um, doing hose lays or like, you know, do, just doing like a basic rep of like something that's, you know, f- a fundamental basic, mm-hmm. uh, task, um, but they would track like everything. And if you did something wrong, like if you did, uh, um, like they ding you for, you know, um, You'd you'd finish the thing and they'd, they'd be like oh like your your mask strap is outside of your hood and you're like ah oh, you know so you get yeah you get dinged for that um, or if you didn't hit in certain times so um, like there was you had like a certain amount of time to get up on the roof and like make a cut and then punch out the drywall ceiling that's on side and like this one dude his chainsaw just got you know smoked up or failed or ran mm-hmm. out of gas some I think it ran out of gas which is like that's 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 very much on you. Yeah, but because they brought an axe up, he he ended up finishing it with the axe and made it back down on time, which was like bonkers. Yeah. So he didn't, he didn't get dinged. That's pretty sick. They're like, hey, like you, you you fought through the problem. Like you, you you figured it out. Yeah. So the whole thing is like, as long as you're not making the same mistake. Yeah. 
you know, repeatedly. Showing that you're not an idiot. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of important. Yeah, and so there's... So, like, every time you mess something up, you got a memo. Did you ever... Because I know there's there's lady firefighters. Mm -hmm. Did they... Were there ever, like, the girls that were trying to be firefighters, and you're like, hey, this isn't for you? There was one that got um, basically, like, no thanks. Yeah. And then she got hired by a different department that was a little slower. Uh, a little, so it worked out. A little better forward. fit, yeah. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, there's a... There were how many girls were there? Oh my god! I mean, there was one that was like a kindergarten teacher mm -hmm. or preschool teacher, something like she was. You're like, wow, well, okay. And dude, well, like, if she, you just get out of her way, yeah. Like That's she might sick. not be like the biggest, strongest person, but like she, she just wouldn't quit. Yeah. And she, you're like, oh man, there's some. There were there there's was, some anger in those yeah, eyes. There were some ladies in my class where I was like, hey, I don't think this is for you. Yeah. So I remember like, because in the cop job, you have to subdue people. Yeah, it's it's different for sure. Right. Yeah. Like the. And if you're like a 110 pound the lady. The violence. And yeah. It's like. Yeah. Like, you're going to get punched in the head and die. Yeah. <laughs> It's like one one punch from, you know, some dude that's like tatted well, I think, out I think what's and trained important, out. I think what's gills. important to remember is like most guys can't do that job. Yeah, that's definitely true too. I saw Most that guys as well. can't do the military thing. Yeah. And that's okay. Most guys can't be cops. Most guys yeah. can't be firefighters. Like most people can't do most of those jobs. Yeah. So. They got to weed it out. Um, yeah. And there's, there's plenty of freaks who are like, ooh, I'm not, not going to fuck with her. Yeah. No, there's definitely some scary ones, yeah. some scary, some scary gals. But I've never seen a few. Like there's definitely some dudes too, where I was like, "Hey, oh, oh yeah, there, there, there were guys. There were a handful of guys. Yeah, if I punch you in the chest, I'm gonna stop your heart. <laughs> and I'm not, I'm not even, like, I'm not even on the massive freaky scale, right? Yeah. Like there's the dudes out there that I'm scared of. Yeah, like, like you can those just, guys, like, just, they're gonna I punch can, through you. You can just sit on them. Yeah, and just like tickle them and make fun of them, which would be like as a cop if some dude. Was like fighting you, and you're like, and you back up, and he just like sat on you, yeah, he's like and just you. tickled you that until would be backup so came. So embarrassing, <laughs> yeah. Dude. It's like all on body cam and dash cam. Yeah, tee -hee -hee -hee, I got you. Tee -hee, and then stop, stop resisting. And then fine, stop, yeah. Once the other guys come up, they're like, all right, fine. You know. Yeah, let's let it happen. Let's watch it. Yeah, that'd be pretty funny. Would you ever like could could a cop ever live that down? No, it would be like badge and gun immediately. <laughs> it'd be like from the movies, like give me your badge and gun. We're gonna fire you. You just got you just got tickled by the suspect. <laughs> you got tickled so hard you peed your pants. That'd be so funny to hear her play out in court. The suspect <laughs> tickled Officer Smith <laughs> while sitting on him. <laughs> Officer Smith could not move because he only weighs 110 pounds, soaking wet. Officer Smith stated he was extremely ticklish. <laughs> <laughs> What would those charges be? Uh, I think it'd be some form of assault. Really? <laughs> I would. I think so. Like unwanted touching. Would so. it be aggravated because you're doing it against a cop? Like aggravated tickle assault or uh, something? Uh, yeah, there's got to be an ARS peace peace officer it has statute to, for that touching. That has to have happened somewhere. I hope so, dude. I mean, there's 330 million people in this country. You can't tell me that no one's ever yeah. fought a cop, but like not not actually fight him. Yeah, like as soon as they get like you know. Like in a mount position. Yeah. Instead of like wailing on him, they just started like, he, you know. He, he got you. Like, that'd be, like this guy be like some. What's wrong with our country, I think? Some, mice and, some mice and men, big Lenny dude. Yeah. He doesn't know any better. Starts just tickling the cop. Thinking it's like we a need to get back thumb. to tickling each other instead of fighting each other. Yeah, dude. The, you know? the, the country needs to heal. Yeah. We yeah. need to unite <sighs> with laughter. Would you still recommend the firefighting job? For sure. Yeah, I feel like oh, yeah. I feel like of the two, that'd be the way to go. If you could do it all over again, would you would you go fire? Uh, now that you know, now that I know, if I like I, I don't know if I'd do it all over again because as much as the police officer job, I think needs an overhaul in that lifestyle and and like just like the laws because there's so many laws, uh -huh. and I think I think there's not enough. Oh yeah, <laughs> we, I think we need more. Uh, it's just like there's so many like BS laws too, and I feel like. Cause, it, cause, like in the gun crowd, right? Yeah. And, like a lot of people are very anti law enforcement, which I totally get. Really, like, <laughs> really <laughs> surprising. Very anti state, which I understand, right? Because there's a lot of negative connotation of like who's going to enforce the Second Amendment, mm -hmm. right? Um, but to me, they're kind of like referees of society. So you kind of, in my opinion, I think you need them. Yeah. So, is there better ways to go about it? I'm sure. Yeah. And. I don't know if I'd give up the education I got from it because I was only there for just two years. 
but it was like some of the best education and like okay. So I, I started out. My, you weren't you weren't in a quiet little sleepy town either. Like you were. Yeah, I was. I, I mean, like, you were in a pretty. Yeah, I was like, on a shit goes that, down there. Yeah, that yeah. bordered. Yeah, bordered a big city. So it was a to me it was a great education. Yeah, got my feet wet. It was like, oh, this is how the world really works. And then like you get to see a wide and deal with a wide variety of people. Well, you get like you're able to pull that curtain back behind. Mm-hmm. What, it's really what everybody crazy because like, like you're going into homes. You're like, yeah. Normal society, like I think I don't think they grasp how much just terrible stuff goes on underneath the surface that yeah. you get privy to. It's like abuse, sexual abuse, like well, content warning. It's it's like so much terrible stuff that you see and you're exposed to, well, like just, just like the um, like where the riffraff ends up. Yeah, and not not like the people out like stealing and robbing, but like le- just legit, like mentally ill, mm. unmedicated. Yeah, nobody to care for them. No, no family. Yeah, people that have no one in their life and they die, and it's like you don't find their body until. Yeah. Potentially weeks or months later, because it's like, who's checking on him? Nobody. So, yeah, yeah, there's a bunch of that stuff. Car accidents. Car accidents are pretty gnarly. Which, like, as you know, yeah. Fire also responds to those, but car accidents are pretty gnarly. It's like car accidents. I remember they were showing us in the academy. I thankfully never had to see a really bad one. Uh, I missed. I was on my uh, honeymoon when I missed a wrong way driver that hit a motorcyclist. Exploded the dude. I mean, they just call it fire and pressure wash him. Pretty much, the, yeah. You just pavement, like, you just scrape scrape that poor guy off, man. Yeah. Motorcycle going the wrong way, or a uh, car going the wrong way hits a motorcycle and just blows the dude up, like limbs all over that's the like, place. That's a, that sucks. It's yeah, like it pedestrian sucks. accidents. You know, people are like live well, right away. I'm like, I'm, I'm sure you do. Yeah, um, but you're not gonna beat a car. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's seven thousand pound steel trucks gonna. It's gonna absolutely explode you. But I remember yeah, sure it'll be like, I, oh, I guess he like, did have the. I guess he did have the right away. Here's your ticket. Yeah, the the fatal traffic guys at work it. Those guys see some gnarly stuff. Yeah, my uh, my brother in law's one of those guys. It looks like worse than like World War One artillery shells going off because it's like some dudes have like the pop of their head popped open. Like I don't think I ever eyed. saw that on a car accident. Like they, so, in the academy, they would like show us all of their like fatals. Oh, like uh, uh streets of. What was that like in high school? They show you like in the driver's oh, ed class. Oh, like, like the DUI stuff? Yeah, they, it's like scared straight, but for like driving. Yeah. And they show you like some lady with like a pipe through her chest and saying her last words. And you're just like, you're like this is why we pay attention when we drive. And you're like 16. You're like, ah. <laughs> okay, I'll pay attention. <laughs> yeah, it was like that, but like a constant slideshow. It's like, all right, this one, Tundra rear ends a car full of um, a mom, a dad, and a baby. No one survived. And you're like, oh, my God. And they're like, Tundras always win. And I was like, all right, I'm going to buy a Tundra. Like, <laughs> Yeah, that's like what the, the lesson learned was like get a full-size truck. Yeah, get a full-size <laughs> truck if you want to live. Yeah. yeah, if you're driving like anything smaller than a full-size truck, you are going to die. Yeah. yeah. That was a good lesson. Like all that stuff, all that street education, seeing how the world works, like knowing your rights. No, I think Learn how to talk stuff. to people. Yeah, learn how to talk to like people. Like how to actually talk to people yeah. and de-escalate. And not, sure like, yeah, not being like a robot cop. Sir, ma'am, I am the law. It's like, hey, man, what's going on? Okay. Yeah. All that fun stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I think whether you get on an Ambo or get on fire, or get on PD for a few years, like, you know, if, if you want to make a career out of it, like, it's, you absolutely can. Oh. Um, But it's also, you know, at least on EMS and fire, like, you can... You have a good amount of off time. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're going to sp- spend some of it recovering. But, um, you know, as far as, like, off time goes, everybody, and also, like, everybody loves the fire department. Yeah. Know? That's um, the nice thing, too. Yeah. You guys didn't have, like, families just bringing you cookies and home-baked goods and stuff. No. Huh? No. We did. It's, it must be nice, dude. Understandably. Yeah. You yeah. know, when the cops show up, it's like someone's in trouble. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like to be fair, like no yeah. one's like, oh, thank God, the police. Oh, are here. thank God, the the no armed, one's just like the oh, armed shit. goons. Oh of the shit, state. fires here! You yeah, know? <laughs> it's, it's hey, lock it up, everyone. Fires here. <laughs> yeah, maybe if the fire marshal showed up and you were an arsonist, probably be like a little, <laughs> yeah, a little concerned. But there were, um, yeah, there were people that would like, you know, do a double take and like, we're not cops, and be like, oh, okay, and then like go back to snorting whatever, like doing whatever. Yeah behavior they were doing their tomfoolery yeah and then at the same time people people are like you know this guy like swallowed this entire bag of something and you're just like okay and you know i talked to him like hey man like 
And I, and I asked the cop, I'm like, hey, can you like just go over there? And he's like, oh, yeah. I asked my captain, he's like, why do you want me to leave? He's like, because he needs him to tell him what's going on without him being afraid of the consequences. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, oh, that makes sense. Yeah, we just need this guy to tell us what he's wanting. Yeah, and I was like, hey, bro, like, what did you, you know? He's like, yeah. I was like, I don't care. He's like, yeah, see my outfit yeah. and the medical gloves? Yeah. I was like, I just need to know, like, if I need to do something, mm -hmm. I need to do nothing, if we need to, like, get you right now. He's like, oh, okay, cool, we're good. Yeah, and, and the, the cop, like, if he doesn't have anything else on, the cop can't do anything yeah. for being, like, whatever he swallowed yeah. once it's in his body. Yeah. So. It's a yeah, so that, that happened a lot, you know, with Narcan dudes and. Like they're they do they always just like well, I didn't do drugs. Like, <laughs> Are you sure? Are you sure about that? You're like there's a thing sticking out of your arm. When in your career doing fire stuff, where you're like, oh, I got I got to get out of here. I got to I got to lean on the meme page way harder. That's my that's my <laughs> escape. I got to get out of this. Um, the meme page was. I mean, we were kind of just it was it was doing its thing. It's going well, and then probably the last it was like six months before I punched out. I hit, I hit up Brandon. I was like, hey, man, I got a crazy uh, crazy thing I want to bounce off you. And he's like, you mm. want to leave the fire department? I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I mean, are you? He's like, yeah, you know, I, you know, I, I get it. I'm not against it. And we were kind of doing the numbers. And and then that just some of the games just kept happening and happening. And I was just, I was so fed up. And then uh, I hit him up again. I was like, hey, man, I, I don't know how much longer. Because I, I think I was like, yeah, like I, I kind of want to maybe punch out in like a year. So yeah. that was kind of the plan. And then it was like six months later. It's like, I don't know. I don't know if I'm like, I'm just so over it, you know? Mm. And, uh, you know, there was, I won't bore everybody with the details, but it was just like this un unfortunate set of circumstances and factors where it was just like, you know, multiple parties were dealt a bad hand, basically. Uh. And so I was just like, ah, I'm just, this is not good for me, like coming home angry and, just exhausted. What what could possibly be going so wrong at the fire department? Are they like stopping like chilly Thursdays or something? <laughs> yeah, that's it. You guys yeah. you can't you guys can't do pizza and Halo nights anymore on the yeah, clock. That's it. They got rid of the recliners. <laughs> they drained the hot tubs, man. I have that, a lot of built up jealousy and spite that Yeah. Well it's just um it's very easy to bond very closely in mm -hmm. the fire service because you're always you're always hanging out. Mm -hmm. You know. We would always joke like, man, if this job would be so awesome if it wasn't for all the calls we had to go on. Yeah. And then people would be like, we just hang come to a house and hang out with three other bros <laughs> and just like lift and work out and play with power yeah. tools. And you're like, yeah. And they're like, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> like, I know, how, how we gonna, how we get, like your whole purpose is to go to calls. Yeah, yeah. no. But yeah, it's you know, it's you're driving a million dollar toolbox and solving mm. the public's problems. Yeah. And that's kinda that's kinda cool. Most of the time the public's like poop themselves and they're naked on the floor, but yeah. Sometimes the public's house is on fire, you know. That's that's, that's when I saw the fire guys jazzed out of their minds for yeah. actual fire. Oh yeah, the pep in their step when they're all turned in their turnout gear, they're getting their hoses, they're spraying. Dude, they were having a blast. Yeah, and so all like all the other cops were standing there watching them put out a fire, and it's just like, man, they look like they're having a blast. Oh yeah, it's and it's like exhausting and so much fun, mm -hmm. and you're just breaking and smashing and. It's great. Were you ever worried about like getting cancer or anything? Because I know oh, it's like yeah. a top oh, concern. Yeah. Like, For sure, everybody yeah. is. Yeah, it's like the cancer rates are through the roof. Oh, I'm definitely getting some kind of lung cancer, man. Like between the burn pits and the fire department, it's like. It's like oh, yeah, you got a double whammy with the military. <laughs> yeah. yeah. How prevalent were those burn pits over there? I mean, we had one behind our house. <laughs> oh, my God, dude. I mean, yeah, they're everywhere, so. One time we were up in the mountains and they like dropped. We're like, hey, we need some more ammo and you know, these, I think it was this type of battery. Or no, I don't think we asked for batteries at all. I think we were just like, hey, we need some more ammo and water. And they dropped some up out. And then they, like, ended up giving us, like, cases of embitter batteries. Mm -hmm. And we're like, we didn't ask. We like, what? like, hundreds of pounds of batteries. And so you just have to burn them all? Well, yeah. So I didn't know that was the plan. We were oh. just like, yeah, we'll figure it out on our way out. And, like, I woke up that morning. Um, I felt like uh, I was on fire. Or like I was breathing like a pepper spray or something. And I was like, what the fuck? And we were like, me and two other guys were like in our little sleep pit. And like, you know, we had security and everything. Mm. Don't, don't come at me because I wasn't pulling security. But we were like in the plume of a bunch of radio, like lithium radio batteries that were oh, on fire sure. with a thermite Surely, surely nothing wrong can go wrong. Really. Yeah, and you're just like, <laughs> oh man, like. 
I'm definitely going to die prematurely from some yeah. weird thing. So. I'll go to your funeral. Thanks, man. I'll give you if you want. I can I can give you a nice eulogy or something. Did you speaking of funerals? Um, did you have to fill out like your line of duty death paperwork about like how like what you wanted or, you know? Yeah, I think I was like, I demand you sever my head from my body and do three <laughs> volleys of volleyball with it. If it touches the ground, you have to start over. Did you actually put that? No. No. Oh. No. I don't. I can't remember if I did act. I, I don't think I did. So our, like my first day. It feels like bad juju. Oh no, they were like, hey, like what, like do you want mm. a military thing? Do you want like, like who do you want to notify? Like, you know, it's kind of like, like. Oh, it's probably like, it was probably like, yeah, like you feel out like your necks of kin. Like who do you know? Yeah, like do you want die? bears? There's probably something like that. It's been a while. Yeah. So it was like, do you have any special requests? And I was just like, <laughs> yeah. And so I, I was like stupid. And I said that like all my all the guys that was like be the pallbearers, like all my homies, like had to, like had to dress as clowns, like actual clowns, <laughs> big like big shoes, the noses, the whole thing. Yeah. I put a bunch of really silly things on there. Um, it was like my first shift. Like I walk in, and I'm all like scared, and like oh, new guy. And uh, my captain was like, "Hey, apparently, like you were supposed to, they were supposed to have you fill this stuff out, and like they're terrified of you going on a fire alarm call mm. without this form filled out. So like just fill it out." And mm. I was like, "Okay." And I was just like, <laughs> and I put some like really stupid stuff in there. Well, hilarious, but like not a move you do as a new guy. True. But I only did that because they're like, hey, it's going to go like directly back to HR into a sealed file, into a safe. Mm -hmm. And like, it's only getting opened like if you die. And I was like, oh, yeah, well, that's fine. And so I, they're like, hey, print it out and then put it in the thing. And I didn't, like, didn't know how the printers worked. I didn't know that like, you could print out stuff to other stations accidentally. <laughs> <laughs> and so I like go to print and I don't hear the printer making noise and it's like print complete. And I was like, uh, <laughs> uh? <laughs> and so I was like, Hey, uh, how do I get it to print? Like over here He's like, Oh, by default it prints out at station one, which is where like battalion and like everybody was at. And so I was like, Oh no. I was like, he's like, that's okay. We'll just call him out. Like, and I, I basically had to tell him like, I put some really silly things in there and I'm like, I don't want, and like you know, they read it. Like you yeah. know, everybody over there they read, all it. read it. Yeah, the battalion chiefs read. Like every single person read it. They can't do anything though, can they? They can be like this. This, this guy's guy crazy. Yeah. yeah, I think that's what that was. That's you probably will, why they didn't like me from the start. You will honor my wishes as in my death. <laughs> yeah, that's, that, you got to commit to that bit at that point. You got to yeah. be like, I want the clowns. Yeah, I demand the clowns. No, yeah, I kept. I I had it in there. I don't know if they would have actually honored it though. Hmm. Because, like, if nobody else sees it, you know, they would be like, oh, yeah, you're the pallbearers. But if they were like, you're not going to bring up the clown part, they're like, you got to force their hand. Yeah. 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 Because then a few people have to know. Like, your buds have to know that yeah. they have to dress like clowns. So when it comes time. Yeah. Yeah. At worst case, someone can sue the department on your behalf for, like, not. Yeah, a FOIA request. Yeah, yeah. For not honoring your wishes and death. Yeah. A brave firefighter burning alive in a fire, and then they don't honor your clown wishes. I always felt like if I died in a fire, it wouldn't be like that. It would be like I rolled my ankle and couldn't get up the stairs or something. You know, like uh, it's something like really lame. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that would suck. I don't know how you guys, like in my head, it's like the firefighters, it's like, all right, you're going to die from burning alive. Well, you'd die from, uh, I mean, there's a million ways you can die, but. Oh, that's um, true. Yeah, like just the, the air being so hot in that environment, mm -hmm. like your first couple breaths in, you're just. No kid. Yeah. Ooh. And then, I mean, you choked. I mean, it's it's horrendous. It's awful, I'm sure. But God, dude. Yeah. So, like, that's one of the one of the instincts. Like, people have to not. Mm -hmm. uh, like, you have to like train is like don't just rip your mask off when you're out of air. Don't just rip your mask out off if you're, you know, struggling and mm -hmm. you know you want to get some more air. Like, even in a training environment, because like you you just can't can't just rip your mask off for realsies. But it makes me it makes me feel more comfort knowing that the best thing for me was just probably getting shot in the face. <laughs> Pretty quick. Yeah, that is quick. Sir, your license register, boom. <laughs> That's it, dude. Okay, never even saw it coming. Yeah, like getting like in a collapse or getting lost in a fire. You like the... That's pretty gnarly. Yeah, it's yeah, terrifying. That was very terrifying. Yeah. You were in Afghanistan? Mm -hmm. Where in Afghanistan were you? Coast. Um, it's like the eastern area. So we were kind of mm. coast, Paktika, um... There's like three different little provinces there that we're in. How is the scenery? It looks like actually looks a lot like here. 
No kidding. Like the mountains and stuff. Was, Did you um, get there and you're like, oh man, it's like I never left home. There's a couple of moments where I'm like, it looks exactly like Arizona. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I like the food. Did you see any Nephilim in Afghanistan? <laughs> I can't tell you that. You can't confirm or deny? I can't tell you that I didn't see that, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> you ever hear about those stories? Oh, yeah. 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 Was there ever, like, any rumors? There was mostly just rumors of, like, oh, so-and-so said there's, like, a hot chick at this base over, you know, down mm. the way. And you're like, yeah. And then it's, like, a guide. Ugh. <laughs> it's the worst. <laughs> yeah. The old classic switcheroo. <laughs> yeah. That's tough, dude. Yeah, like, rumors... Yeah, there's no like none of the supernatural stuff. Um, some guys did find see a a panda bear like way up north, supposedly. Yeah, because I mean, like China shares a border with uh, Afghanistan. That's pretty cool. And the mountains are like the foothills of the Himalayas, basically. Yeah. But yeah, it was um, it was interesting for sure. If mm. I, you know, being a medic was was cool. Well, there's some not cool parts, but right, it was um. It was definitely interesting. Um, so I was there 08, 09. Um, I didn't do the full deployment because I was, uh, I got out of AIT. I got to my unit and they were already there. And so uh, I was like, oh, so like, what do I do? And they're like, you're, go you're like, you're going to go. I was like, oh, thank God. Because mm -hmm. I was like, you don't want to be the guy that like. Is Missed waiting. the show. Yeah. Because like after a certain date, they kind of, they're like, ah, it's too close. You guys can just. You guys will catch them on the next trip, and then they're just like, "Oh, great! Like now we're the guys that aren't, mm -hmm. you know." But yeah, it was a it was a good time. I learned a lot, saw a lot. It was definitely like that. Just you know, a lot of people like travel the world. You're like, go to a third world country, mm -hmm. like it'll blow your mind, possibly literally, quite literally. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you make the wrong move. Yeah, it's a lot to unpack with Afghanistan. Yeah. So my older brother, he was deployed to Afghanistan as well. Um, my other brother, he got deployed to Iraq. So they, they both got two different kind of like experiences. Yeah. So I was always curious, like they, they described it as like Old Testament meets Toyota. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's the literally the, the best way to describe oh, it. Okay. People are like, you know, when the Bible is written, uh-huh. Okay. So just give them like AKs and HME mm -hmm. and Toyotas. Yeah. You know, it's kind of, it's kind of a vibe. Yeah. It's, I mean, they got no NFA. No, they don't. So they can get whatever they want. I mean, they do, I, like, on, on the books, I think they got some some laws and yeah. some rules and stuff, but, like, you know, Ye Yemen doesn't have any. <laughs> I'm serious. Like, Yemen has, yeah. like, it's in there. It's, like, constitutional thing. It's, mm -hmm. it's like, yeah, like, like there's some reporter that went there and was, like, yeah, like, was interviewing this guy with, like, <laughs> anti-aircraft stuff. <laughs> <laughs> You're just, like, people are like, America has great gun laws. And I'm, like, uh, you should check out. You Yemen. should check out Yemen. Yeah. Oh man. Maybe I should. Go. Like, where's the or like, where's the uh, you know, like these expat communities in like uh, Thailand and Philippines? Yeah. Like Costa Rica and like. Go I wonder if there's like I wonder if there's an expat, expat community in Yemen. Yemen. <laughs> That's like expatting on hard mode. I'd, I'd assume. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm legendary. Like, no, no, no. I'm just here for the gun thing, and they're like, yeah. okay. Where are the warlords at? I want to. I want to be a warlord. <laughs> yeah. Where are guys getting all these cruise missiles from? Yeah, that's pretty sick, man. I think if you had access to good health care, running water, and some decent streets, Yemen would be... I don't I don't know how Yemen is. I think it's awful. Oh, cool. So. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's pretty rough. It's like... I think it's one of those, like, who's in charge this week kind of deals. Mm, we can go reverse colonize it. Yeah. Or reverse immigrate. Yeah. You don't want to go live in Yemen? No. <laughs> All right, maybe I'll, maybe I'll shelf that idea for now. <laughs> for now. I was trying to talk some other people into it. Mainly you. You start a Yemen, you could start an American Yemen colony. <laughs> and then I'll just I don't know if, I don't know if you'd want to be over there right now. I don't know if anybody wants to be over there. Right yeah, now. no, I think aren't they like launching, like, right, like right now. Yeah, yeah no. isn't there something popping off right now? Yeah, we was popping off right now. Um, some guys keep shooting ships. Oh, that are going through there. I mean, to be fair, if I was in Yemen, I yeah, if you're I, if you're I, just I didn't a have much going Yemen on, with yeah. a cruise missile. And I saw some big boats out there, and I happened to have some cruise missiles. <laughs> yeah, like, what's the worst that can happen? Yeah, what are they going to do? Drone strike me? Come yeah. on. <laughs> yeah. Turns out they will. <laughs> Turns, out <laughs> Turns out they Absolutely will. Absolutely do it. Yeah. Turns out that's the U.S. Navy's bread and that's butter, like, dude, um, is just flying Like, how much of it's just, like, boys being boys, you know? That's a great question, dude. It's like when, uh, during the fall of Kabul, you know, they, they post the picture. They're like, oh, they're hanging people from helicopters. And you're like, no, like, watch the video. Yeah. And what the video showed was... 
one dude flying and one dude on the spice fry system just doing this, <laughs> you know, and you're just like, they're doing the same thing we'd be doing yeah. if we were like, if we had no rules. Yeah. There's no rules. And we just found like helicopters and military grade stuff. Like we'd, we'd be doing the same thing. That is extremely accurate. Yeah. That is extremely accurate. I like the rollerblading cops. Dude, those guys are a vibe, man. man. So cool. Like they're grabbing onto trucks, getting rides, going through traffic with their AKs and rollerblades. There was blades. some movie in the early 90s that was like rollerblade. Like there was like a rollerblade team. Dude, there was a rollerblade, this. The fad. The fad of it. Yeah. Yeah, I was a fruit booter. Were you? Yeah. I mean, I skateboarded too, but. You also bladed? Yeah. Mm. What was that? <laughs> what was that movie? Um, Like enough talk. Let's blade. Brink. Brink. You remember that? No. Oh, yeah. Was Might it, be a little before your time. Is it a rollerblade movie? Yeah. I'm gonna, you'll, you'll see the comments. I'll, I'll for sure, like, try and... Yeah. I'm probably not going to watch it, dude. No, you, you probably won't. <sighs> I think it was a little before... How, how old are you? Uh, 27. Yeah, it might be a little, a little before your time. How old are you? 36. When you get so old. I know. I ask myself that regularly. Did it just creep up on you one day? It does. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I wish I had. The, I wish I had the kid sooner. Mm. That's my only. Yeah, it'd be fun to have a kid when you're 16. Because <laughs> no. when you're 32, they're 16. You know, just, you just knock it out young. No, well, there's pros and cons. Yeah, because then it's like, all right, by the time they're 18, Dude, I could know. barely take care of myself when I was 17. Yeah, that's a fair point. I don't think I was. I don't think I could have had the mental capacity to have no. a child at sixteen, dude. No way. My main my main concerns were playing Modern Warfare two, <laughs> or playing Halo, or yeah. yeah, definitely not child raising. Yeah, that's that's hard. How many kids do you want to have? As many as the wife is down for. Yeah, it's a good response. What about you? Pretty much same. Yeah, I I popped out one. And I was like, oh, this is pretty sick. Let's keep going. Yeah. Run a cool down though for medical reasons, mm -hmm. and then we'll get right back to it. So nice. Yeah, everybody says the the first one's the hardest. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's such a life adjustment. Yeah, but I love it. Like that kid came out, and it, it, everyone, like all the dudes that have kids, are like, "It's going to change you. It's going to change mm -hmm. you." And sure enough, they were absolutely right. The mental the, switch, the, the, like the second, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. Like as a single, I, I, I was, I was telling, you, I was like, "There's no way to describe it." No. And people are like, I was like, oh, no, no, I think I get it. And they're like, no, no, that's cute. No, because I have nieces and nephews, but it's, I love them. But, but it's, it's, because you yours. have to, because yeah. they're, you know, your, they're your family kin. members, kids. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Like I love, I love my nieces and nephews. And, yeah. But they're not your, they're not yeah, your it's, child. It's, it's like, it's not your kid. Yeah, yeah. So it does, it does add a, a whole nother stake in like, all right, I'm now very vested in how society turns out. <laughs> yeah. Like before, yeah. it's like, oh, yeah, we'll burn this bitch yeah, down. Yeah, I don't yeah. care. Yeah, but now it's like, oh, no, I, I, I want to see a better future. Yeah, like, Ugh. But like, it kind of lights a fire underneath you a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny how quickly you just totally change. Mm. Even in business stuff, too, I've become much more aggressive mm -hmm. in like how I do my dealings to, to get the best angle for myself. Because yeah. it's like, it's not just like, I used to be a little bit more laissez faire, like, ah, you know, I'm doing good. Yeah. I'll, you know, close this deal, whatever. Now it's like, Hey, right. I'm, I want to get the best deal possible. Yeah. If you're going to stop me from that. Like I actually care about like life insurance and yeah. stuff now. Oh dude. Yeah. Yeah. That was a big thing. My wife was like, hey, you better get life insurance. Yeah. Like wills and trusts. And yes. Whole, yeah. Making sure everything gets handled in case I die, especially when you're getting shot at by MG42s just for a YouTube video. <laughs> uh, hey, turns How out. How many times have you been shot at for a YouTube video? Oh, uh, at least three, at least four times. And each time you're, you told your wife. What, what has, you wasn't she a little? You just don't mention it. Okay. She doesn't love it. I mean, and to be fair, she doesn't like watch my YouTube videos, so I can probably get away with it more. <laughs> but there were some where I was like, looking back, I'm like, hey, this is not the best idea. What was the first one? Was it was the first one that you did where you shot it? You had your uh, brother. Uh, the first, so the first one was just small arms, mm -hmm. like seeing what they sound like. And then, and then we did the MG 34 and we did the 42. Cause I was actually genuinely curious. Yeah. Like, okay, you see it in the movies. How does a 42. Yeah. And you guys had like good sound equipment out there too, which is just, which is just like my road mic. It oh. was me with a camera downrange behind, hiding behind like a, a shallow berm. And then it was like, all right, let it rip. 
and the sound, like, you know, in Band of Brothers, when um, Shifty Power's getting shot at when they're taking Carantan, mm-hmm. it sounds kind of like that laser gun coming at you, where that laser gun, like, like it's, it sounds very similar to how Shifty Power's getting shot at by that mm-hmm. 42. Like, same Private Ryan. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds very spot on. Yeah. Which is, I mean, it was a cool experience because it's like you're a, a young dude who's actually been shot at by 8 millimeter Mauser yeah, from like, MG42. Ooh. Yeah. Because I'm sure there's other young dudes that have been shot at by MG3s, you know, even the Global War on Terror. But it's like, I don't know if there were 8 There's millimeter. all sorts of weird stuff. Yeah, being used. I'm sure. Yeah. You found an AK with a, you know, like a, like an actual shovel handle. No, no kid. Like as the stock. Unironically. Yeah. Man. Yeah, there's all sorts of wonky. I'll talk to other vets, and they're like, "We found a crate, like we found shipment containers fulls of SCG 44s that we had to destroy. Oh. They were all in like eight millimeter curves, like Waffen marked. Damn, but it was like during the you know during the Iraq War, so yeah. yeah there's all sorts of crazy, crazy caches that were found. I'm sure, if the U.S. Like government took that stuff. and sold it on the market, they could have made a fat check. And oh yeah, what they what up. they should have done is just like bring it back, put it on gun broker, mm-hmm. sell it, to, sell it to like the dealers, the SOTs, all that. Yeah. But no, we can't have nice things. self fund the, the, the GWAT could have been self-funded. I know, dude. <laughs> like it's a business. Yeah, it's pretty much just raiding Iraq and taking all their cool stuff. <laughs> Selling it to the American That's how public. war is supposed to be. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like how sanctioned war... pillaging and looting. Yeah. And that's the whole point of war is like legalized stealing of your neighbor's stuff, man. Yeah. Think about World War II, all those GIs coming back with crazy stuff. Dude, they didn't even care. Like, nobody no. cared. No. Yeah, like, like, I'm just going to keep my Thompson. I don't know, like, to what. So, I think they cared because there's stories of guys being like, all right, at the end of the war, I was supposed to turn in all these gas masks. I was in charge of turning all these gas masks, like, masks back in. Like, they were counting them. Mm-hmm. They just didn't care, like you said. Like, yeah. Like, they were trying to keep track of stuff. I think they were just like, all right, war's over. We're good. All, yeah. I'm sure all the guys that were supposed to be in charge of that stuff were like, right, I'm getting out too. Like, I don't care. Yeah. I want to go back to my. It. My factory job. I'm curious. I'm, I'm curious, like how, like the, just the amount of weapons that were all over the place, after, you know, war's over. Yeah, I guess you know, like there really wasn't a. Yeah, people get all riled up about like gun control and violence. And yeah, stuff, you ever but, see that? Uh, I think it was like an 80 plus year old German that had, I think, two tanks in his basement <laughs> and a bunch of weapons. <laughs> tanks. I think he had like a. I think he had like a Panther tank. Or the Panzer Fine or the Panther Tank. I should know this. But it's, it's one of the nicer versions. I think it's like a 75 millimeter gun. It's- <laughs> so like I've just imagined like the war ends and he's like just <laughs> pulling that thing back to his house. He's, a, yeah. he's like, you know, frowling. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't tell anyone. Yeah. I think <laughs> it was missing a tread or something. But there's a video of them pulling it out of his basement. And it's like It was oh, an man. actual tank? Oh, yeah, an actual tank. Oh, man. That's yeah. so cool. Some people get all the luck. I know, man. I would have tried and figure out a way to get like a tiger tank back or something. <laughs> well, if you're a pilot, you could buy, um, you could buy uh, certain planes for like two thousand dollars, which was mm-hmm. quite a bit at the time. Yeah, but, I mean, if you if you're not spending your money, you're just doing your sorties and being at base, racking up your pay. It was, it was like after the war, because that's how like I think it was like the IDF like stood up their air force, mm-hmm. um, as they had like American GIs buying surplus planes. Because if you're an American GI and you're a pilot, they had some special program on like certain types of aircraft. Mm-hmm. So they were funding them, they were buying it, and then going to like Venezuela. And then there's like a whole documentary about how they they stood up their air force. Hmm. But it was it was one of the things they were doing. So yeah, like like keeping your keeping your M1 Grand, I think, is a little different than be like oh, I'm just going to keep my BAR, my yeah. Thompson. Because I mean, they sell the NFA and they sell the ATF, but it's like no one was. They could. They got away with so much, man. Like there's so many stories yeah. of oh, yeah. Thompsons being in, you know, yeah, above the fireplace, yeah, at grandpa's or, house, is or it? being up in the cellar, and then they find it like years later, and it's like, hey, you're not supposed to have that. So then they get worried and turn into like the local sheriff's office, and they destroy it. And it's yeah, like, but it's like, isn't there? Isn't it like the some of that stuff grandfathered in? I think so. Yeah, you know, if you do the right, paperwork. like if it's in the family, yeah. yeah. Yeah, my, some people just don't know though, so they get worried and they they want to turn it in. There was a there's some rifle my grandpa got in, from the Philippines. My grandma's like, oh, he flew paperwork, and I'm like, eh. I'm pretty know, sure he's like an infantry platoon leader in the, in the Philippines. This like, this Arasaka has burn marks on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I was always like, oh man, that's so cool. And he passed away when I was like two or three, so I never really got to be like, tell me about it. Yeah. Know? 
Um, and um, my grandma always said, she's like, oh, yeah, you know, when you're 18 or whatever, we can let's give it to you. And I was like, went up there when I was like 17 or 18. And I'm like, hey, like, where'd grandpa's rifle go? She's like, I donated it to the local museum. And I'm like, oh, why would <laughs> grandma, you do that? <laughs> Come on. Yeah, but, but I thought that was kind of cool. So I can't wait till all my kids get older and I can start like giving them my guns. Yeah. Cause now I'm in the point where it's like I'm kind of refined my collection to get them as cool as possible. Yeah. Like I'll get I'll get guns in for review or go over them for a video. And I'm like looking at them like, all right, they're cool, but they don't have like the the mill serp or the historical cool factor or just like as collectible as I want mm -hmm. them to get. So I've started pruning. It's no the like Tapco SKS, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's not like it's just like, all right, it isn't what I think would be cool for my kids in the upcoming generations. Mm -hmm. So Yeah. That is pretty cool. I'm trying to like really dial in the collection now. What's crazy to think about is like some of these, like there's people that have like their great grandfather's lever gun. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like that's ideally it's like my great grandchildren will have my my AR-15. Yeah, that's yes. the ideal. Yeah, spare barrels, bolts, all the parts you need. Yeah, this ancient technology laser. That's yeah, they're probably gonna completely... have like rail guns. They're gonna figure <laughs> yeah. out rail guns. I feel like we're like overdue for another step in weapon technology. I yeah, feel oh, yeah, like. it's like direct uh, direct energy weapons and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, do you buy into those conspiracy theories of like the blue like the blue house stopping direct energy weapons? And I don't. It was weird that like the like that the la like lasers don't uh, affect blue like that. Mm -hmm. I didn't look too much into that conspiracy theory. Um, but I'm gonna. <laughs> <laughs> well, now that you mention it, I gotta check it um, out. But yeah, I mean, they've, uh, they can like, well, the, I think it was like the UK just announced like they can shoot down stuff with a little laser. Mm. But like one of the issues, is, like, I guess it's like power source. And yeah. There's a lot of like, there's some, some steps they have to overcome before it's. I saw they have like these massive batteries and some of the planes that have the direct energy weapons. Yeah. Like the whole plane is. A giant flying battery for yeah. this laser thing. That's that's probably the the hiccup is how you power those things. Yeah, someone's gonna look like Dune technology where it's like they have the laser guns. Dude, you, you already saw the new Dune movie, right? Oh yeah. Oh dude. Yeah. Wait, do we have the do we have the bucket? Oh yeah, we're, we're gonna. Oh get no, the, we're not get the, the bucket. bucket. The bucket, dude. I was looking at them on eBay and they're going for like <laughs> north of a hundred bucks. <laughs> no. But thankfully here at the studio, Zeke's got a Dune bucket. Thank you. Zeke. Look at this thing, dude. Look at this thing. You just put your popcorn in. Popcorn? <laughs> <laughs> you butter this thing up, dude. What are you talking about, popcorn? Think I that's what, about that's popcorn? how you butter it up. What did you think of the new Dune? I thought it was insane. I thought it was awesome. I remember, I felt like I was melting into my seat watching yeah. it. I think it was one of the best movies I've ever watched. Yes. Yeah. 100%. I remember, I remember being kind of like shook leaving the theater. I was like, that was so good. Yeah. And it's, it's like the first one where you're like, man, I was just getting started. Mm -hmm. It's like three hours later. You're like, no, just make them five hours long. I don't care. I'll, yeah. I'm down. I, I'm really hoping there are going to be like a drop of like very extended cut versions. That's what it, I've heard. I've seen some people, I've seen a yeah. lot of people saying like there's uh like there's a, cause this one, I think there's, there's going to be like a, I saw somebody maybe say like 40 minute extra director cut or okay. something. Yeah, I don't know. It kind of reminds me of like Lotar or Kingdom of Heaven. Do you ever mm. see like the director's cut? Yeah, I heard like that Heaven? one, like the, totally, like the director's cut versus the three, yeah. theatrical release. It's like a different movie essentially. I thought like the how long was the Kingdom of Heaven director cut? That one was pretty long. It was long. Yeah. Did it creep up to the four hour I don't think mark? It, I don't know if I've seen the director's cut on that one. It made, it made but really, I know it's long, and because people are always talking about it. Yeah, they added a lot in that. Yeah. What was your favorite part of Dune Two? Yeah. There's so much. My I know my least favorite part. Spoilers. I know my <laughs> least favorite part is dealing with Shawnee, like how she was always like, "Oh, you're gonna be, you're gonna yeah. Be, please, babe, don't become radicalized." Which is weird because that's like not how the book is. Yeah, that's what I heard. Is everyone was talking about how the book is how she's on board with it. Yeah, I think it, I think the worm battle was pretty epic. Like it's hard. Oh yeah, yeah. And then and then I the don't. opening when the all the Harkonnens are just like they like their land, and then they start climbing up the rocks because of the worm sign. That was like, all right, I am in for a treat. Yeah, because like, I was this like, is good sci-fi. Yeah, yeah, because it was like the the what do they call them suspensers or the mm -hmm. um, yeah, that was pretty cool. I wish there's more Sardaukar in it. 
that was my biggest complaint is yeah. the lack of they're in there. pipes they're in there. and the lack of started yeah. car chanting. That would that one really made me bummed yeah. out. I wanted more. Did you ever see that like chants. ten hour loop? Of yeah, <laughs> just to, well, sometimes I'll, I'll throw it on and like. <laughs> yeah. Bim, bim, bim. Yeah. I feel like I'm in. Uh, You're not the only one. Yeah. So, so was it Seleucus Secundus, the planet? Uh, for the started car. Oh god, I can't remember. That. Sometimes when I yeah. feel like I got enough time, I'll just start watching the Dune lore on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, Sarda Carter. I thought that the 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 just that little blip of a scene in the first one mm -hmm. where you're like, okay, they're just doing a little ceremonial thing, and then it shows the bucket, and you're like, oh, okay, oh, the, and then it zooms out and shows the guys upside down, and you're like, oh, oh <laughs> man, yeah, these guys are gnarly. Yeah, yeah, it was an incredible movie. I, I'm going to see it again, actually. You want to go watch it? Probably, yeah, we can go watch it again, dude. <laughs> yeah, right now. <laughs> I loved I loved uh, Christopher Walken as the Emperor. Yeah. Because everyone, I think everyone was kind of like, really? Paul Atreides. Yeah. Police on out, guy. Gaib. I need more spice. Atreides' artist, death. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he's about to paint his masterpiece. <laughs> Yeah, that, I think he did. I think he had a good, like, very high court vibe to him. Yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah, there was a lot to take in. Yeah, it is. Can we? I, I like. I remember watching. It, I was like, okay, I'm definitely gonna need to rewatch this. Yeah, it's very rare with movies because I'll rewatch movies like a lot actually, mm -hmm. but it's like usually very popular ones and ones that I like. Yeah, and so with this one, it was how many, like, how many times do we watch Blood Diamond? I slowed down, but for a while it was quite a bit. <laughs> yeah, I've slowed down. Um, you know, I'll rewatch Same Part Ryan or watch Band of Brothers or The Pacific over and over again. So I feel and, like I'll cycle through like all my favorite movies, like yeah. at least once a year. So I'll look at them and I'm like, oh, it's not yet. Like it's mm -hmm. oh, I see Gladiator. I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm ready for Gladiator. Yeah. Or I'm ready for Master and Commander. Yeah. So it's it, it can it can come and go in waves. Like there are certain movies that like aren't necessarily like my favorite, but I really enjoy. I'm like, all right, yeah, I'm in the mood for this. Where you, where's your stance on Collateral? Collateral is it's pretty up there. So I want I want to talk about that movie. The problem is is there's really good gunplay in it, but there's not a lot of guns. Mm. So like and there's like, it's, it's, it's hard to point. go because I like to talk about the backstory of the characters too and like you know, some historical context and it's hard to talk about Tom Cruise's character because he's intentionally very vague yeah right so it's we don't we don't we weren't given that much so you have to kind of fill in a lot of the blanks yeah there's some there's a lot of parallels between Collateral and Heat though mm -hmm. so kind of same thing with yeah. like uh, the the Heat crew yeah it's inferred that there may be some prior service it's inferred. I yeah. Well, did, you, did you read the the book Heat Two? No. So, uh, Mike, I think they confirm it. Heat Two is coming. Yeah, uh, they're Heat Two. Heat Two movie. So that Austin, what was his name? Butler. Austin, Austin Butler. Butler is going to be a young like um because it's it's going to be like before and after the first Heat. No kidding. Um, so they're going to have Austin Butler be young. Uh, Val Kilmer. Young Val Kilmer. Okay. Um, about young Robert De Niro. Is he going to be in it? Well, no, he dies, so he won't be in the after. Yeah. You should do, like, Danny DeVito for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Danny DeVito makes sense. Yeah, sure, Matt. <laughs> yeah, you can have whatever you want. You're the guest <laughs> on the podcast. Yeah. Get, get the, shut, the, shut, the, <laughs> shut the front door. <laughs> now you just can't leave. Yeah, Detective Hannah was a good character. Yeah. I think they confirmed that they were, like, he was for sure on coke while filming. Probably. Yeah. She had a great ass. <laughs> who? 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 What am I now? <sighs> yeah. Yeah, that was a. Uh... Yeah, it was solid. It's good. It's such, it's, there's so many good movies. Yeah. I wish they would always, like, when it comes to gun stuff, try and capture that feeling. It's hard. Very hard. Um, Inexpensive. But yeah, it's hard. It's expensive. Like, I can't even imagine the cost of. What are you going to do? So, you, you, you. Like, what does that look like? You call. The city of Los Angeles and say, "Hey, we want mm, to shoot. We want to we, we want to shoot a bunch of fully automatic blanks for a movie mm -hmm. in broad daylight." In oh, cool! Like where? Like in your high rise, like banking district? Yeah. Like, sure, we'll send you the paperwork. I mean, that's the, that's the nice part about money is you've got enough. And yeah, you probably do whatever you want. But I mean, just the whereas it's like, hey, we can just 
do a little green screen. We can mm. build some props on, you know, in a in a in a studio and yeah, we just much more controlled VFX it in and in Hollywood. I think ever since the Alec Baldwin thing has gotten very like ooh, guns probably Even more so. Yeah, um, you yeah, like Sicario. There was there was plenty of scenes where they're clearly shooting blanks and mm -hmm. doing it, and then there's somewhere you're like. There's not even shells coming out. There's mm -hmm. not like um, a second one when the Blackhawks landed. And they, uh, it was like for some of those scenes, like they're clearly shooting with blanks and squibs and the whole thing. And then some of them were like, it would have been so easy for them to just be shooting blanks. They were, mm -hmm. were clearly just post production in. It was always, that always kind of weird me. Yeah. It was like, like, I'm sure there's a why behind it, but. Yeah, there's got to be. Those guys yeah. are pretty dialed in with their craft, I would say. Yeah. They oh, for sure. Yeah. And post production and all that. They probably think, like, they probably see a scene and they're like, "Oh yeah, we got to add." Like we we weren't planning on doing too much shooting or heavy shooting here, mm -hmm. but I don't know. But yeah, it's fascinating for sure. Especially like the VFX, mm -hmm. like that they do. I like legitimately thought they were on a military base with C-17s and stuff because it looks so yeah. real. It looks it, like they. Yeah. But nope, they cheese all of that. Yeah. In Sicario. Yeah. You can do a lot with movie magic. Even oh. like on the YouTube side of things, how low how low production we are compared to a Hollywood production. Mm -hmm. Uh like we can cheese gunshots all the time now. Really? Yeah. They're not great. For now. Yeah, for now. But I mean there, the, there's the, a way the, to do the it. The visual effects and special effects that like the average guy has access to yeah. now versus ten years ago. Oh yeah. What's it going to look like in three years? Mm -hmm. The next, the next evolution for me would be getting the uh, getting the bolt to cycle to the rear, and then having a cheese shell eject, which it's doable. It just takes more time. I would imagine. So typically, though, if you're making a YouTube video, you're always on like a, a time constraint. It's like, all right, I want to get this video out typically by the end of the week or in two weeks. So if my guy who's editing is really focused on like for just a quick scene, trying to get all this. Uh, shell ejecting, and I don't know how much goes into that VFX. So. Oh, I'm sure, a ton. Yeah, I can't. Uh, I no like idea. a muzzle flash isn't that hard. A like muzzle flash fakes some recoil, but no shell ejecting, not that hard. So maybe, supposedly, unless my guy's really good. So yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, it'll be interesting to see like where AI goes with that. Yeah, because like, did you see the new AI like B roll coming out? Mm -mm. So or um, maybe I did for. Yours or just in in general? What's the, yeah? What is it called? I can't remember the website. So it's under like pretty like tight lock and key, and the implications yeah. are pretty terrifying. Yeah, because it used to, like there's a video of it where it's like Will Smith eating spaghetti, and it's clearly like all right, this looks really bad. Mm -hmm. But then fast forward a year, and you can essentially you're gonna delete a whole stock footage industry. So hey, give me a give me a drone shot of the California coast, and it looks right hyper realistic yeah they, AI, ai has a really hard time with like people hands yeah <laughs> yeah so, i have seen i have noticed that you know you, like weird just weird like fingers hand, and... like your hands coming in and out and then there's like the puppy scene where the puppies are kind of going in and out of each other mm. so if you're like if, if you're not looking for it you may not detect it off the rip yeah but if you're like if you train your mind now you're gonna have to be like all right is this ai or not yeah and pretty soon if you give another year i'd say if you're not gonna be able to tell no yeah, that's it is pretty, pretty terrifying. So I, I mean, the implication is like, all right, give me an AI video of Matt committing a crime. That's just the tip of the iceberg. Yeah. Imagine, imagine the human depravity that's going to go into that too. Yeah. Yeah, it is insane. We had a good run. We had a yeah, good run. Society. Yeah. Yeah, I'm hoping the solar flare takes us out, <laughs> resets the AI gods. No. In the Dune universe, I think they had a war against AI. No, they had a war. Uh, it was uh, it was a uh, computers. Mm, okay. So like um, any like you can't have. That's like when the 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 guys that were doing all the math that were mm, running numbers. The syntax. Like yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like because they there's like no computers. Yeah. Um, learning machines, I think they call them. I kind of like that. Yeah. You have spaceships and no computers. That's why you need the spice guild navigators. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Let's just get back to Dune. Man. Let's get back to Dune. Yeah, we need to redo our society. I kind of want to just like go around out in the desert and do the Fremen thing. It's not a bad way to go. Yeah. Ride Shy Halud. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just simulate that. Just like around a U-Haul truck, dressed up like a, like a worm. <laughs> <laughs> 
No, like imagine like a like a week long like Dune LARP. Yeah. I could, I could t- <laughs> Please, yeah. <laughs> like all right, you gotta you gotta throw your hooks on this I mean, outside, on this on like how, a semi truck or like a greyhound bus dressed up like a worm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I mean with how, how much we LARP already, it's not outside of the wheelhouse. I think that'd be cool. We're pretty much LARPers as it is, dude. Yeah. I think there's something to it. Yeah. I think you're onto something. That could be a next business venture where you provide the client Dune LARP. <laughs> <laughs> Live uh, as the Fremen on Arrakis. Yeah, They're like, hey, where's the water? I'm like, well, what water? <laughs> fun, fun fact. You get no water. <laughs> there yeah. you go. Yeah. <laughs> you know how valuable that is. Very valuable. Yeah. Mm-mm-mm. What's next on the worst responder horizon, dude? I don't know. It's kind of keep pushing the job stuff, finding um, you know, because we got the game, um, you know, selling stuff like I. You know, selling stuff's cool, but mm-hmm. I think I'd, I would it would be really good to like expand into like training and like like cert not like you know, training, but like um, like ho- hosting or or coordinating some kind of thing that jumps around, you know, like different different uh, region of the U.S. Mm-hmm. in each quarter and like hey f- come for two or three days and like you just get tons of certs and um. Kind of some of these some of these courses or skills or classes that just needs you know to check a box yeah um, that'll allow you to really open up and do a lot more contract stuff like like uh, the, like doing pack tests. It's what's a pack test? Uh, putting forty five pounds on your back and walking three miles in forty five minutes. Okay, but you're not allowed to run. I don't know if it was a medical thing or if it was like so. A, that's like a, a like a basic wildland thing. Okay, and so you know you do a couple of these like wildland classes. And that's, you know, you'll get your, you know, you get that and then you, you get a pack test, but like you have to have a pack test for each season. Mm. And there's a whole bunch of weird bureaucracy and like, you can't just like, you have to have like a, a certain level of authority, if you will, for your organization to be able to like sign off on people's Mm. stuff. So a lot of these like new companies will get these contracts for some wildland stuff, but they don't yet have the ability to like sign off on someone's pack test. Mm. So like to, you know, like just being able to, you know, kind of make it more accessible. Some of these certs and courses and, you know, annual, annual refreshers, if you will, would be pretty cool. But yeah. What's next for you? And wouldn't you like to know? This is my podcast, buddy. I'm asking the questions. Is that, you think this this gives you power. You think this gives you power over me? I just just doing the YouTube thing, yeah. podcast here, podcast there, making videos. I want to get into short movies, like doing like dip my feet into shorts. Yeah, uh, not short form content, but like an actual like story driven short. Yeah, where it's not as gun like gun review focused or talk about a gun focus, where it's just straight up a story. Yeah, like true um, short films. Yeah, yeah. I think that'd be fun. I think the the right context for it though, making sure it's good. Yeah. So it's a big undertaking. Yeah. So that's kind of something of one of my dreams. I keep talking about it. It's got to do it. Probably chances are the first one I'll make will suck anyway. So many such mm-hmm. cases. Yeah. I mean, yeah, first, I think most people's first attempt at most stuff doesn't. Yes. It, it, it's not, you know, not ideal. Yeah. But that's the part, that's the process. Are you getting hungry? I'm getting kind of hungry. Yeah. Yeah, let's go eat. Matt, thank you so much for coming on to the <laughs> Armo podcast. <laughs> I know. Yeah. We spent about 20 minutes talking about Doom. Where can people find you, and how important is it f- for the medical crowd to know about what you're doing? Um, you can find us on Instagram. Mm-hmm. And um, I don't know if it's important. Oh. Okay. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so our our main thing is uh, if if you're an EMT, a paramedic, a nurse, a firefighter, wildland, um, anything in between, and you don't like your job or you want to see what else is out there, what opportunities exist beyond you know your standard clinical hospital kind of setting or ambulance setting, um, I would implore you to travel the world, get out, you know, enlist. And check it out. Enlist worst, in the job and check board. Check out worst responders. Yeah, you mean? check out worst yeah. responders and uh, check out the job board. So uh, beyondthemeatwagon.com. Um, yeah. So 
there's plenty of articles. Don't have to buy anything. Mm. Just read just read the articles. Whether you want to get hired on fire, whether you want to just know what the whole contract thing is, how to get into it, how to make the most of it, how to get hired, how to get called for the first contract. Um, and it that really applies to any, you know, medical or non medical contract work. Mm -hmm. Whether you're a clerk or security guard or whatever, um, there's a, there's a lot of a lot of smart people who've written a lot of articles, put them on our website. So, um, yeah, stick to firefighting, kids. <laughs> Don't be a cop. <laughs> Don't be a cop. Go save some cats from some trees. We got nothing else for you. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.